Thank you for being part of this devotional series. For the next five days, we're going to have a short video each day that will focus on some aspect of prayer. Our goal is that God would use this week to help us start this new year with a greater desire to seek Him. Did you ever sit down to pray and not really know exactly what you should pray for? The Apostle Paul gives us a model for how we should pray in 2 Thessalonians 1, 11 to 12. In these verses, the Apostle Paul speaks to us about how we can pray for other believers. He says this, To this end we always pray for you, that our God may make you worthy of his calling and may fulfill every resolve for good and every work of faith by his power so that the name of our Lord Jesus may be glorified in you and you in him, according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul prays for these believers in two specific ways. First, he prays that God would make them worthy of his calling. God had called the Thessalonians to himself by making them aware of their sin and their need for a savior. He called them to be his children, sacrificing his son to pay for their sin and make them his own. In light of that reality that they have been called by God, he now prays that God would make them worthy of that calling. Not meaning that somehow they needed to earn worth in God's eyes, but he prays that their lives would reflect the reality of that salvation in increasing ways. He's praying that they would grow in things that please God, that they would grow in becoming what they are not yet. In the first few verses of this chapter, Paul, he celebrates signs of grace in their lives, ways that God was at work. And now he prays for more. He prays that their lives would more and more reflect the work that Jesus has already begun in them. So this informs how we can pray for other believers. Parents, this is a great way to pray for your believing children, that God would make them worthy of his calling, that their life would show more and more what it means to follow Jesus. Small group members, this is a great way to pray for other people in your small group, that they would continue to live lives worthy of what it means to be a Christian. Second, Paul prays that God would fulfill every resolve for good and every work of faith in their lives. When we come to faith in Jesus, a work of transformation begins in us. We're given new and growing desires to know and love God, to witness to what he has done in our lives, to serve and love others, to study his word and to pray. Paul calls each one of these desires a resolve for good. As we develop these new desires and by faith act on them, Paul prays that God would fulfill them or that God would bring them about in our lives. He's praying here that when the Thessalonians have good desires to serve and please and obey God, that God would then take those desires and make them effective, that, that he would make them fruitful in their lives. So we can pray that, that God would take even what seem to be small and weak desires in the lives of other believers and, and empower them. We all need this in our lives. If God doesn't take these desires and empower them, then they remain empty and fruitless. Wouldn't you be glad to know that someone is praying for you, that they are praying that God would take even a small desire like getting up early to read your Bible and pray, that God would, would take that and empower that time and make it effective in your life. Or think about a Sunday school teacher who has a good desire for her students. She prepares a lesson and a craft, picks out a, a song and creates a puff, puppet show. She prays for her students. These are good desires and, and works of faith, but unless God takes them and brings his power to them, nothing will happen. God must work in the lives of her students. He must be the one to fulfill those desires and bring about change in the hearts of the students in her class. 
So as you pray for your church, pray for Sunday school teachers and youth leaders, that as they serve and teach the students in our church, God would take those desires and those works of faith and he would fulfill them by his power. In verse 12, Paul gives the reason why we should pray this way. He says, so that the name of our Lord Jesus may be glorified in you and you in him. We pray this way, not just so God brings power to our good faith desires, but as we grow in our faith, we pray that Jesus will be glorified in us, meaning that our lives will make Jesus look great. Paul isn't praying that we would be more impressive or that we would get a better reputation, but he's praying that through Jesus, through his work in us, that he would be more impressive to those around us. Finally, Paul anchors this prayer in God's grace. He didn't live and pray dependent on his own strength. At the end of verse 12, he says he prays all of this according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul isn't praying that we would try harder. No, he's praying that God's grace would be at work to bring these things about. We need God's help to make anything we do for him effective, and that includes prayer. So as you think about prayer this week, consider these words from the Apostle Paul as a model for how you can pray for others in your church family and trust in God's grace to bring the results.